Yeah, what's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Jordan Mosley, a.k.a. That's Nigga Ball. A little bit different. We're going to be reviewing Rick and Morty today. And that probably might have been one of the best seasons they made. Definitely top three. I'm going to let it sit for a little minute. It could be two and not two. It could be top two and not two. But I'm not going to be a hype beast. I'm going to let it sit. But... To get everything out the way, first and foremost, there's got to be some things addressed. Roland is gone now, and he was the voice and co-creator. So it's like, okay, how is it show going to be written? How is it going to be voiced? Let's start with the voice, obviously. Some people think Rick's voice is a little funny. I, I think Rick's voice is it's a little bit weird, but it's not anything crazy. Like, to me, it took maybe an episode and a half for me to be okay with it. Like, to me, it wasn't bad. I, it was just a few times it was like, okay, he conveys emotion a little bit differently than Roland or Royland, but okay. It's, it's not bad. It wasn't as bad. It wasn't like, okay, Rick's voice is just makes the show unwatchable. It wasn't that by any, any means. And from episode, I'll get into episode, episode in a second, but from episode one to three, Morty's not really, Morty's not really in the episodes. And episode three comes around and it's like, oh, you, you can clearly see why he wasn't in the first three episodes. Morty's voice, at least to me, more, a lot, a lot more noticeable than Rick's voice to me. Everybody might be different, but to me, Morty's voice was like, uh, Morty's voice sounds a little bit weird. Episodes one through three, I feel like. And I was like, okay, I understand why he's not really in the episodes. Later down the line, obviously, I got started getting more used to it. I feel like after watching, I watched the, uh, the season top to bottom twice, and I watched a few episodes three or four times. I got used to it after a while, but it was just, it was a little bit weird, but cool. So let's start off with episode one. Episode one picks off, picks right up off <laughs> Mr. Stinky Poopy Butthole. Um, you know how he got shot and his, he got back and then he had his wife and kids and the wife left him and now he's depressed. We just pick up right where he's depressed. He's living in the house for a few days and... It kind of follows him. He's kind of the main character of the episode, which was, okay, new season. That's how we're starting. Voice changes. We're not even going to give the audience a chance to really hear the voices a lot. Like, more, again, Morty might have had one or two scenes, and then Rick was probably in half of the, the scenes. Or probably maybe a little bit more than half, but it was a lot of Mr. Stinky Poopy Bow. Um... I'm not going to spoil it. It's not going to be spoilers, but it was a solid episode. A, a solid episode. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It was, it was solid. It was okay. There was some funny moments. Mr. Stinky Poopy Butthole. Cool. Then we get to the second episode where it was kind of about consciousness. It was kind of like a Black Mirror episode a little bit, but it wasn't as, as dark, but it was like if you put your consciousness in somebody else's brain, and that, that's basically what Rick and Jerry did. It was an episode, a Rick and Jerry episode. Again, Morty's not really in it. It's a Rick and Jerry episode. They kind of bond. Um, basically, they ask themselves, okay, what would what would Jerry be like if he had Rick's mind, and what would Rick be like if he had Jerry's mind? It was just an episode of that. It was, it, again, it was a solid episode. It wasn't great, it wasn't bad, it was solid. Then we get to episode three, and this is where things start to pick up towards the end of episode three. Episode three, and this is a little bit of spoiler, so I'll probably put a spoiler. Episode three is basically the president and Rick, mostly, in another episode. Again, another episode where Morty's not really in it. Cool. So, Morty isn't really in it. It's Rick the President and Rick's therapist. Rick's, there's an, another Rick's therapist episode. 
So basically, Unity is trying to contact Rick. Why is Unity trying to contact Rick? This is where it's going to go into spoilers. Unity is trying to contact Rick because I guess ever since Rick went on their mission of trying to find evil Rick again, she basically, you'll see at the end of the episode, I'm skipping around because it's chronologically, it's not one of a, it's not a chronological episode. At the end of the episode, you kind of see Unity, Unity left Rick like five voicemails like, hey, Rick, you, you haven't, you're not, you haven't contacted me in a while. I'm concerned. And then it's another voicemail. Yo, the reason I'm concerned is because when you do that, it's usually because you're looking for him again. She doesn't say who him is. She's like, and then this is another voice message. So obviously it's over the period of months, years. It doesn't really say. And it's like, Rick, please call me back or I'm, or I'm going to have to contact you some other way. Obviously doesn't get back. So obviously he says him as in Rick Prime. Yo, you stop contacting me when you are fixated on finding Rick Prime. So clearly this insinuates Rick has done this and you saw it in his memories hundreds of thousands of times and has failed hundreds of thousands of times. He's almost failed infinity or what feels like to him infinity. So cool, fine. Now they see in the episode, obviously she comes down and basically brainwashes the whole state of DC a kind of less interesting story the president kind of just goes through this phase it's cool the, pre the president's in it but really it's Rick again Rick his therapist and then unity and basically they come to the conclusion like Rick was depressed and he's super fixated on it and it was unhealthy for him to you know box off unity and Rick uses him boxing off unity as kind of like a no i'm only doing that because and he is right the universe is infinite but unity and rick clash literally and what that means is every time rick comes in town unity becomes unity and she loses the hive mind so rick hurts unity and unity hurts rick because every planet she conquers rick essentially can't go to so they're polar opposite anytime i'm with i come in contact with you if you're unity i start not being able to control everything as rick hey every when i try to explore the universe you taking over the planet a lot that's one less universe i can that's one less world in the universe i can explore so we are polar opposites but we attract but we're polar opposites I negatively affect you just like you negatively affect me. So, great episode. Great episode. Not top tier, but great. Like, if I did, it would be like a B plus. Great episode. That goes right into, and this these next two episodes are going to be spoiler. That next goes into Mortios. So, Mortios is basically an episode... It's like, hey, we have pasta every Thursday, Italian food. Yeah, yeah, the family's all happy. The Italian food is like, oh, my God, this is the best thing I've ever had. And they all explored the universe. So one day, Morty digging in the shit that he shouldn't dig in. is like, Rick, where this is the again, this is the first episode. Morty's really in the episode. And his voice, this is by the time this got to this, I was like, OK, I'm kind of getting used to it. But it's still a little bit weird, but cool. He's like, Rick, where he follows Rick on how he gets this pasta because nobody knows where he gets the pasta from. They find out that Rick gets the pasta from another universe. And then th this episode gets really heavy. So, you know, they basically they start the episode with giving a shout out to the suicide prevention hotline. I should have started off with that trigger warning or anything, but... That's how that episode starts off. So I'm like, okay, this is... Now, I never saw that before, so this might get a little bit deep. And you'll see why it got deep at the end. But boom, suicide. So it's like bunch of suicide. So in a different universe, people who kill themselves, their intestines turn into spaghetti and it's the best spaghetti ever. They don't know that their intestines are spaghetti because to them, it's like, yo, why would I eat a dead body? But to obviously Rick and Morty's universe is like, no... That dead body is spaghetti now. It's food. But they don't do that. They're not cannibals. 
So cool. R- Morty, you know Morty, digging this shit that he shouldn't have dig- dug in. He's like, no, this is wrong. I should tell these people that their insides, we eat their insides. And he tells their company, or tells the world, and then they leave. Cool, they leave. All right, got it. They come back, or Morty comes back at least, and it, it is like, uh, it's just a microcosm for capitalism. Similar to the Morty episode, the Citadel, the first Citadel Morty episode, where it's like, you see the life of a Morty. It's just like a microcosm for capitalism. The, the bad part of capitalism, like, yo, you're exploiting people, and there's people on the bottom of the totem pole. No matter what they do, they'll never not be at the bottom of the totem pole. The government exploits that, and not now jump to this episode. The government exploits. The government exploits that, and now it's just like, oh shit, our intestines are food for other countries. We should start selling this capitalism. So instead of just selling it, they make it so. And this is where that episode starts getting deep. Their citizens literally start killing themselves. They make like they tint the sky out, the sky out gray. It was a microcosm for capitalism, especially in America. They keep, you know, the poor, the poor forever. They keep the suicidal, the suicidal forever. So, I, like I said, they they mute the sun out. <laughs> it's not funny, obviously, but it's ironic. They change the San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge. They change that to now there's no ropes. They want you to jump off the side. Literally, they change the gate. So there's no ropes on the outside. Anybody can just jump off it whenever and nobody's going to stop it. And they basically brainwash their uh, civilization into killing themselves. So for profit, just, you know, government being greedy. So that's not even where it gets deep. That was deep. And that's not even where it got deep. Pause. (laughs) It gets deep when... They're like, okay. So they start selling it. And obviously Morty comes back and says, yo, this is unethical, Rick. Let's change it. So they change it or they come up with ways on how to change it. One of the ways, I'm not going to go into all of them. because one, But one of the ways was clones. The, let's just say the clones didn't work. Another way was uh, just a, a, a mindless body. But a mindless body can't kill itself. So they just make clones of mindless bodies. But a mindless body can't commit suicide. If it dies any other way besides suicide, I forgot to mention that, it doesn't turn into spaghetti. So it has to be suicide. A mindless thing can't suicide. Then they clone just a torso with a spinal cord so it can make movements, but there's no head. And then you just put a knife in it and it just kills itself, but it has no mind. So I guess it's the quote unquote ethical way to make the spaghetti without making your citizens suicide. So just clones killing themselves. It was another microcosm of, you know, one side bursts in and says, hey, those torsos should have rights. And another side bursts in and says, hey, uh, the food tastes weird so they're just boycotting it so they just blow it up whatever cool then Rick was like okay I can synthesize this the way I can synthesize this is by and they go into it just I need one person to suicide or kill themselves and I'll just record it and just synthesize it so they go to this old man and this is where it gets deep It's going to be hard to spoil it. So obviously I just want y'all to watch it, but y'all will. It's basically just a story about this old man. And this is the deepest part without spoiling all of it. The deepest part is like, it basically asks the questions, is it better to have loved and lost or to have never loved it again? And just goes through this similar to Roy. It's similar to that Roy episode, except it pulls on the heartstrings a lot more because of the suicide topic and it really goes deep that episode ends and I'm immediately like that might be a top 5 episode they ever made they have now made 60 episodes and that might be a top 5 episode so obviously that is high on the on the list for me um cool not cool but 